this next singing songwriter I've known for a, a lot of years. We played places together up in Berkeley, and and it's always good. It's just always good to have Chuck back, and and it's it's always good to hear him because he's always got new stuff, and and I love the stuff from years ago. So it's just. It really makes me happy to bring back one of my favorite songwriters. Could you please welcome to the stage, Chuck Brodsky. Thank you, friends. How you guys doing? It's nice to be back here with you. I just flew in yesterday, visiting all my old haunts. I lived out here for about 15 years. I live now in Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> tricks, yeah, gobs of makeup that were caked on his face, starch in his collar, every hair was in place, and his wife stood beside him, and his daughter did too, behind them the flag with the red, white, and blue, balloons from the rafters, they fell to the floor, oh happy days, we're gonna be here once more. He said all the right words, he quoted Bob Dylan's songs He sounded hip even though he quoted them wrong And his closets were cleaned and his history revised So his record would be spotless in most people's eyes And he could sell you a war, he could revoke your rights And still come off as your friend in the camera lights And he'll run negative ads if he has to to win and he'll go back on his word and he will shed his old skin now, I was not touched by this guy in the least He was no savior, I think he was the beast Well I have to admit, they staged a good show And it was all reminiscent of four years ago He came to our town for Maybe an hour in the streets, the guy swept and planted some flowers. Babies he kissed to the people he waved and he stopped at a Civil War general's grave. And after an hour, they whisked him away. Things went back to normal, but it took two or three days. The homeless returned to living outside, and the flowers that they planted, they all wilted and died. Yes, it came to our town for maybe an hour. In the streets got swept and they planted some flowers. Sometimes people ask me, well, which one did you write that about? <laughs> As if. Well, back in 1970, maybe it, might, it was either 70 or 72, the Pittsburgh Pirates had a game in San Diego. And they had just finished a series in Los Angeles. And they had a pitcher on their team by the name of Doc Ellis. Well, Doc Ellis thought that the team had a day off before they'd move on to San Diego, and he did what 
most athletes probably do in their days off, he took some LSD. <laughs> and after tripping his head off all night long, he took some more in the morning. And then his girlfriend happened to notice in the newspaper that not only did the Pirates have a game in San Diego that night, but Doc was pitching. And so he had to make his way to San Diego from LA. Showed up a little bit late. Had to explain his way through that. And then he proceeded to pitch no hitter. And this is a true story. I kid you not. It was a lovely summer's morning, an off day in LA. So thought one Doc Ellis, as he would later say. His girlfriend read the paper, she said, Doc, this can't be right. Says here that you're pitching in San Diego tonight We got to get you to the airport So off Doc Ellis flew His legs were a little bit wobbly And the rest of him was too Took a taxi to the ballpark An hour before the game he Gave a half-assed explanation Found a locker with his name The organ in the upper deck Played all the smaltzy hits He could hear it in the clubhouse While Doc was getting dressed His sunglasses he reached for From his locker in a case Doc Ellis put his jersey on And he put them on his face and Time came to go on out there Down the corridor The walls were a little bit wavy And the ripples in the floor Went out to the bullpen To do a bunch of stretches And loosen up a little and Throw some warm-up pitches All rose for the national anthem and people took off their hats. Fireworks were exploding and the cokes were already going flat. Doc was back there in the dugout. So many things to watch. Some players spit tobacco juice and others grabbed their crotch. Then the umpire hollered, play ball, and so it came to be. Doc's pirates batted first when they went down one, two, three. Doc's catcher put his mask on and he handed Doc the ball and it was 327 feet to the left and right field walls. So Doc's pirates took the field then and Doc stood on the rubber and he bounced a couple of pitches and he bounced a couple of others. He might say about that day that he looked a little wild. The leadoff batter trembled, and nobody knew why Doc Ellis smiled. When you walk eight and you hit a guy, oh, the things that people shout. Especially the manager, but it did not take Doc out. Doc found himself a rhythm in a crazy little spin. Amazing things would happen when Doc Ellis zeroed in. But sometimes he saw the catcher, and sometimes he did not. Sometimes he held a beach ball, and other times it was a dot. Doc was tossing comets that were leaving trails of glitter In the seventh inning stretch, well he still had his no-hitter So he turns to Cash, his buddy, says I got a no-no going Speaking the unspeakable, and he goes back out there throwing Bottom of the ninth, and he stood high upon the mound Three more outs to go, and he'd have his name in Cooperstown Zaro, he flied out to a loop. Then Kelly grounded out for Dean in the shortstop yield. That's two. Must have been a madhouse. Fans upon their feet, littler ones among them, standing on their seats. Well, that would have brought up Herbal with a speezy old pinch hit. And he took a third strike looking, and officially that was it. It was a lovely summer's morning, an off day in LA. So thought one Doc Ellis, he. Later say Thanks. Thank you.
you do a search on Doc Ellis on the internet, you, you find some interviews with him where he talked about that day. It's kind of fun stuff. <laughs> this next song I wrote for a pub owner over in Ireland by the name of Tom Nevin. And he lives in a little town called Carrick on Shannon, in County Leitrim. And it was after a show I did there. Oh, about a year and a half ago, I guess, and we were having a pint together after the gig, and man, 10 minutes passed, 15 minutes passed, and he suddenly turns to me and he says, got to finish up. I'm locking up in a minute. I've got to go home and open up tomorrow morning. And I was kind of taken aback. He said, morning, and I asked what time he opened. He said, 9.30, and I asked if he had people in there drinking that early, and he said, oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> asked me to write him this song called The 930 Pint, so I did. Well, it's not so big a town, and I know all of the locals. Some come in to read newspapers, some forget their bifocals. Strangers find a home here, trust me, I have seen all kinds. 930 in the morning. I start pouring pints The 9.30 pint Set the morning right For the one who just got off After working all the night There's a stop along the way As he makes his journey home Before he pulls the curtains closed Disconnects the phone The 9.30 pint To whoever wanders in It is not for me to wonder Or ask where they might have been If he passed out in the bushes Or if he caught a couple winks Well I don't make it my business know why they need a drink If you've been at it all night you just have to have one more Or if you need a cup of coffee I'll be happy to pour If you need a place to sit Warm up or unwind Well I'll be right over here Pouring these 9.30 pints The 9.30 pint Perhaps to start a person's day Who am I to judge? Who am I to say? Cause if they leave here happier Than when they first come in I'll be here tomorrow morning Should the punter call again Get a 9.30 pint This one I'm glad to pour Cause I'm grateful for the business That comes in through the door So what are you having, sir? What's it gonna be? I can tell you're not a local You're from across the sea The top of the morning to you Is another fine day I'd turn away no one Cause I have bills to pay you See that pub across the street one up top the hill If I don't pour the early one Well, you can bet they will So before you rush to judgment And condemn a decent man Allow me to introduce myself Offer you my hand I'm just your friendly publican You're very welcome here I open at 9.30 And 
you don't have to drink beer So I'll do you another one that comes from my, my travels over there. I go twice a year. Uh, if you've never been there, it's, it's well worth it. It's a, it's a wonderful country. This story comes from a little town in West Cork called Clonakilty, and they have a wonderful folk club there called Dabara. It's one of the classiest um, folk clubs in Ireland. And again, after a, a show there, fella came up to me and asked if he could buy me a pint and he obviously had it had something on his mind he needed to talk about and told me the story which was something that had happened earlier that day it's called Claire and Johnny 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 he loves Claire of all the places we could start is as good as any right there Johnny signed the order that took his lovely Claire They're gonna make her better But it was more than he could bear What other options were there? What else could Johnny do? She was the most beautiful woman that Johnny ever knew But Claire sometimes got ugly She had Johnny in a vice She could get so mean all of a sudden After being so loves Johnny and Johnny he loves Claire the way she was behaving Johnny he got scared sometimes it would be hours As she would sit and stare Some voice that wasn't hers would speak But she just wasn't there And Johnny got so low down He needed cheering up He had to get out of the house So he headed for the pub And that's where we got to talking We had a pint or two He asked if I might write a song about it I said I'd see what I could do Claire, she loves Johnny 
and Johnny, he loves Claire. Even with her cussing at him. Lord, how she could swear. Even with her throwing things, some that really hurt. Even when she'd speak, those unspeakable words. Every day she's groomed Sometimes she notices the flowers Among whatever else she sees And then she turned to Johnny And asked Who brought me these? Johnny And Johnny He loves Claire Although She may deny it Said what Johnny did It was not fair She tells Johnny She hates him Strokes her lovely hair Of all the places we could stop for now Thank you very much I just got back from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. About a week ago, I finished recording an album up there. So I'm doing a few songs from it anyway. Next set, I'd like to do a few more, some of which I don't really know all that well. I might have to do off of uh, Cheat Sheet on the floor, if you don't mind. But this is one that I've been singing for a little while. For the kindness of strangers, I'll often give thanks. Some have fed me and clothed me, some have filled up my tanks. Some have taken me inside their humble abodes. Giving me sanctuary But on this goddamn blessed road It all fit in a backpack With a sturdy metal frame and My map had roots to everywhere So I underlined some names
could have walked to China Well, I had that light load Nearly weightless when I set out On this goddamn blessed road And I banded with some gypsies And they had a little camp And a garbage fire to keep warm by From the cold and from the damp and They taught me about honor And they handed down the code I have always tried to live by On this goddamn blessed road The picture was in black and white Till color came one day And then almost as if right before my eyes The truth it became gray And answers became questions I put my faith in the unknown And I trusted it to lead me Down this goddamn blessed road A lot of good books have been written You can read every one You can take notes and recite quotes as proof That you got your reading done So many interpretations of the words Of the old timid poet Who inspires me to write my own On this goddamn blessed road Magic happens sometimes Things will just appear Some gone in an instant But the memories are dear My heart, it gets heavy And my legs, they get bold Hauling all my riches away Down this goddamn blessed road Now the distance was far greater Sitting face to face at home Than it would have been from almost anywhere If we'd have been talking on the phone So I told her that I loved her With a lump in my throat I got in my car and drove away Down this goddamn blessed road Now the world is at your fingertips And all you got to do is choose Certain games you'll still play anyway Even though the odds are that you lose Call it an adventure then Just the latest episode
Well, let yourself be tempted right on this goddamn blessed road. Now, billboards tell you where to go, and others tell you what to do. So you're left with having to decide for yourself what might be right or wrong for you. My one and only question is how to know, how to know. With all the answers people have for you, and on this goddamn blessed road. Time to do one more here, <coughs> and then I'll come back and do another set. So I hope you'll stay. Um, now I wrote George Bush a little love song <laughs> since it's Valentine's Day coming up, and I, I'd like to just sing this for you. Yeah, it's, it's, it is sweet. I think. Got, you know, I bought this T-shirt from DemocracyMeansYou.com. It says, it "Looks like a campaign T-shirt for Bush, but it says Bush Orwell, 2004." And I live, in, I live in the buckle of the Bible belt. And uh, when I wear that thing at home, nobody sees the Orwell part. They just see the bush. So all the right-wing, serious, you know, conservatives, they're like buddy-buddy with me. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing today? And all the people like us, they won't make eye contact with me. <laughs> it's, so, it's bizarre. So. There's terror in our midst, and it could be one of us. Beside you in the line, behind you on the bus. Wearing camouflage, they might be wearing suits. These terrorists among us might be wearing army boots. These are dangerous times, people are afraid. No looking back at history to see how enemies were made. Some dictators are bad. Some dictators are good That's a hard one to explain But I wish somebody would So let us all agree Let us not dissent Let us not ask questions Such as where our freedoms went We'll just fly, fly the flag Sing God bless America Question people's patriotism Who don't join in the hysteria dangerous times so we lose our rights while there's terrorists among us that do their dirty work at night there isn't time to read the contents of the bills the congress votes for anyway up there on the hill there's terror in our midst and it wears the good disguise and it fools a lot of people they seem like such regular guys rewriting all the rules you don't have any say. In fact, they even count on you to look the other way. There's terror in our midst, all over the TV. But it's what's behind the words that scares the daylights out of me. The twisting of the facts, the stretching of the truth. These terrorists among us, they manipulate the news. So let us all agree. Let us not dissent. Let us not ask questions, such as where our freedoms went. We're gonna build them schools. We're gonna build them banks. We're gonna build them pipelines from their fields to our tanks. Now my heart goes out to Johnny. He's sent off into war. They convinced him it's for freedom. That he'd lay his life down for My thoughts are often with him And I pray he comes home safe And I pray for every innocent 
laid early in the grave and who was in your house while you weren't home looked through your computer through everything you own what do they want to know which websites do you visit what have you learned about them they want to know come on what is it these are dangerous times you might be overheard using one of whatever they've defined as being the dangerous word what if they don't like your songs or what if they don't like your books what if you fit some kind of profile based solely on your looks these are dangerous times listen to us talking they read the things we write they watch us all on cameras they know where you were last night they know where you stopped for gas which magazines you bought back in 1984 this was all just crazy talk so let us all agree let us not dissent let us not ask questions such as where our freedoms went let's have a look inside those pockets Let's have a look inside that purse. Let's have a look inside that glove box or someplace maybe worse. Let us all agree. Let us not dissent. Let us not ask questions such as where our freedoms went. You guys all set? Funny kind of smell Your feet stick to the carpet What it is, you cannot tell the Curtains, you can't close them And the toilet won't stop running the Lights are kind of flicker There's a banging in the plumbing Room over the bar Number 213 Not particularly large Not particularly clean It's supposed to be a king bed But it's not even a queen On the deck stand are some dusty and outdated magazines One without a view Can't open up the window And there's no light coming through There's a great big concrete wall You can look at if you want The rooms that have a view They're all around the front The room over the bar Is the one they give musicians It's the one they haven't fixed up Cause it's only for musicians There's at least a couple burn marks On almost everything you Lie down on the bed And you feel each one of the springs Find hairs on the sheet a Broken down remote You can't turn off the heat the Towel small as a washcloth And the toilet won't stop running the TV with three channels on the ceiling On a swivel the Room over the bar Hear everything below All sorts of filthy language It's where all the cussers go Some words I've never heard before And some I've not heard since I used to feed myself But one or two of them made me wince There's a guitar player below He's got people singing all the songs that people know The sound is all distorted and it's turned up way too loud There's some really awful singing going on there in the crowd The room over the bar is never gonna close You got to get up early but it's just the way it goes They quit serving at midnight but the last one leaves at four Then you toss and turn for a couple hours more Funny 
kind of smell Your feet stick to the carpet What it is, you cannot tell This is where the fade comes in That's the dangerous thing about fades on albums. Because when it comes time to play them live, you don't have an ending. I taught at uh, a songwriter's retreat in Michigan back in November. It's called Lamb's Retreat for Songwriters. And if anybody is interested in songwriting, this is just a fabulous gathering there. I, I, I couldn't recommend it any more highly. The guy that runs it, John Lamb, is a great guy and he has a well thought out program. And it was my first experience ever trying to teach songwriting. I break a lot of rules, so I was glad to represent the rule-breaking faction. One of the great things about the retreat is that everybody gets a song assignment including the staff. And all these little vignettes are dreamed up by John Lamb. And they all interact somehow. You know, one person might be, for example, the old lady that sits in a window and watches the couple walk past every afternoon at 4 o'clock holding hands. And that's their song to write, wherever they wanted to take that. And somebody else might have been the, the woman in that couple that was holding hands every day with her partner and happened to notice that there's a woman in her window that just sits there all alone every day. So that would be her song to write. And my assignment, which was really interesting, was to debunk the myth that this subdivision, Forest Hills, was such a wonderful place, you know. And in addition to that, my song was supposed to be the one played during the final credits, at the end of the final credits in the movie version of this story, which was so weird because actually a week earlier, a song, uh, a movie called Radio came out, which has my song called Radio in it that plays at the end of the credits. And he didn't know that. So anyway, this is called Forest Hills. sign says Forest Hills It's a wholesome kind of place I guess there was a forest here Before they built this place These cookie cutter homes With the logs all manicured The cars are washed and polished Those are all the kitchen floors And it's a wholesome kind of place that's what they'd have you believe There's a flag at every house And a few overachieve We have a child prodigy And a couple of folks do art And a little neighborhood baseball team That plays with lots of heart A letter to the editor I read it in last week's paper Ridden by that knucklehead He used to be my neighbor Talk about intolerance These people he calls heathens Cause they don't believe the same things That this knucklehead believes in Now I know for a fact Certain so-and-so reads porn Package meant for him once was delivered to my door I didn't hand it over No, I kept it to myself If we should ever have a problem Well, it's up there on the shelf There was a Pakistani family That lived just down the block As soon as they'd replace the glass Someone would throw a rock 
I don't think it was children Though children can be cruel Whoever it was that did it They broke the golden rule People read the times They watch the TV news They receive it like the gospel They've all fallen for the ruse They all have their opinions But none of them have clues There's a patriotic silence And no dissenting views Now the school we have here Could not teach a monkey how to climb And Evie's neighbor maintains That to homeschool is a crime Well I think she's a moron I told Evie on the phone Tell her it's none of her goddamn business In the gentlest of tones They know him as the garbage man But I know him as Anthony The trash he turns to beauty Some could profit from it handsomely These little works of art He would sprinkle on their lawn would end up in the trash again just as soon as people saw Now Katie burned some leaves and that's against the law The cop who showed up first said they had gotten 20 calls He wrote her a citation but it just went up in smoke They put her in a squad car made for 20 happy folks and each 4th of July it's the same tin foil parade waving from a flatbed while a band behind them plays all of our local sponsors and all the block captains too party hats and streamers all red, white and blue Just below the varnish And under the veneer Behind the smiling faces And all of that good cheer You got your petty jealousies And all your different feuds You gossip and suspicions And people who are rude The sign says Forest Hills wholesome kind of place Now I'm not saying by whom But it was recently defaced So let the credits roll And you can use my song My guess is there for Hollywood It's a few seconds too long Walmart, see how they level the field, community banded against it, there was a backroom deal, trees one day begin falling, bulldozers tear up the grass, just down the road from the superstore, shopkeepers are boarding up glass. Where they're putting in the highway They're talking about eight lanes Running it right through the neighborhood Invoking imminent domain Trees one day begin falling Bulldozers clearing away bricks The neighborhood is divided Alternative plans are next Well, they're putting in a ballpark It's a developer's dream 
we give them 500 million or else we might lose our team money will come from the city we'll vote on it till the day it passes and all of our local schools have to do without music classes They're putting in those mansions Clearing out a bunch of these woods Putting in a gated community Security will be real good Trees one day begin falling to Open the mountain views They put in a road to the waterfalls Now they charge admission to it So say you live out in the country Up a steep mountainside Holy little oasis Nothing but peace and quiet Trees one day begin falling Somebody's moving in Building a house right on top of you And he says he wants to be your friend Trees one day begin falling. Bulldozers clear the path for a really different future. No brakes, just stepping on the gas. Thank you. I'd like to do this the song that uh, is from that movie Radio. Coach Jones and Radio are, are friends of mine. They live in the town of Anderson, South Carolina. And uh, I know some of the critics didn't really care for the movie. They thought that it was a bit of a stretch or a manipulation. It certainly wasn't meant to be an art film. You know, it was a feel-good movie. But um, the criticism I kept running into in the, in the reviews of it was that they just couldn't believe that these that Coach Jones could actually be as saintly as he was portrayed by Ed Harris and I, I'm here to tell you that he truly is. He's a real down-earth, wonderful, humble human being that has done a wonderful thing by befriending a man with a learning disability um, 40 years ago and including him in, uh, well, in the football team there and just making him a part of things at T.L. Hannah High School. I got to sing the song at the premiere. They, they did a, a wonderful thing. They held the premiere in Anderson, where they're all from. And they made it as first class, incredible um, an event as you could ever imagine. And all the, all the cast was there. And the radio pulled up in his limousine, and the real radio. And there were about 2,000 people from Anderson outside cheering him on when he showed up. Um, I also um, got a little guest uh, spot as an extra in the final scene. If you happen to ever see this movie on DVD or anything, they replaced Cuba Gooding Jr. and Ed Harris with the real Coach Jones and the real radio. And when they do, it's a banquet setting, and I'm I'm just over just to your left of Coach Jones, and they freeze the frame for like three seconds, so it's kind of like a close-up. <laughs> so anyway. in South Carolina T.L. Hannah High The people there will tell you Just ask any passerby Not the kid who speaks in gibberish Folks will tell you Shoot There was nothing but a little love and attention Gave voice to a mute Who stood with his transistor Pressed against his ear Picking up certain frequencies that only he could hear The 
There was this little man inside it Perhaps his only friend The only one who talked to him The only one back then Coach Jones yelled, come here, boy, to this kid up in the stands. He was mimicking him loudly, making gestures with his hands. The players on this football team exchanged uneasy glances. He jumped when Coach said to jump, but how slow the boy was advancing. And Coach Jones was pulling on the drawstrings of his hood. The kid he spoke in gibberish and Coach, he understood Lamb imitating lion Should've looked like easy prey But this is not what happened, no It went the other way Now this kid they nicknamed Radio He was 18, going on six Team needed a water boy, so the job was his. Coach convinced the principal to bend a couple of rules. They'd pick up radio every day on the way to school. And everywhere that Coach Jones went, his lamb was sure to go. They tried him out in special ed, but his marks were too low. The kid's now in his 50s. His hair is sprinkled white For 40 years he's come to school But cannot read or write Come football Fridays They let radio be the star He falls in with a marching band Then with the color guard jumps when the cheerleaders jump with pom-poms on his hands and he cusses like the coaches do and he high fives with the fans they give radio report cards and they give them varsity letters they let them wander freely T.L. Hannah sweater He visits all the classrooms And if ever there's a test He whips out his box of crayons And he tries it the very best Now everyone knows radio Townspeople adore him And the students pat his head Just like the parents before them Anderson, South Carolina Folks would tell you, shoot There was nothing but a little love and attention Gave voice to a mute being here playing for you I uh, hope I'll see you before too long well here's a I'm going to close out with a song that uh, is about a fella who uh, was known well known in the Appalachian mountain region he started out in Iowa his real name was Chess McCartney and uh, but everybody came to know him as the goat man he lost his land during the Depression, and he was too proud to go on the dole, so he worked some odd jobs, and then one of them got severely injured and wasn't able to work again. And rather than take the government money, he decided he'd take all of his goats, hitch them to this rickety old wagon that he had built, and off they went. And for about 40 years, the man just walked all over the United States, set foot in 49 of the 50 states with his goats. He'd have like 16 or 18 of them in the front pulling the thing, and he'd have another eight or 10 in the rear that would be act as brakes going down a hill. <laughs> and he was somewhat of a lay preacher. He uh, sold trinkets and such and raised money to build a couple of churches down in the Macon, Georgia area. Um, 
the free thinking churches, he called them. And, uh, he was quite a character, and one of those characters that seemed to be slipping away from our world, you know, as things speed up. So this is my little tribute, tip of the hat to him. Well, the traffic would get backed up when the goat man came around. And the TV cameras picked him up some miles out of town. With his tattered sooty overalls and his greasy railroad cap Going no place in particular with a wagon full of scrap Ches McCartney was a farmer when the depression hit Well he has some land in Iowa but the bank foreclosed on it So he took to cutting timber for the WPA Until a mighty tall tree fell on him and crushed his arm one day they found him underneath it And they thought he'd met his maker But then he woke up in the funeral home And that shocked the undertaker but The big tree left him crippled But he swore one thing for certain that He would never sign up for the dole He would never be a burden Most folks might have quit right then After all that had occurred But Chet still had his Bible And he still had his herd So he built himself a wagon And he hitched it to his goats And they all just set out walking Down the old two-lane roads North he'd go in springtime And south when it got cold The old man kept walking Till he was 85 years old All through the Carolinas Virginia and D.C. Georgia and Alabama All across Tennessee Couple nights in somebody's field on the outskirts of the town. The people would flock to see him, afraid there was a fire. Cause he made a lot of black smoke, burning little scraps of tires. The people would flock to see him, then he'd have them collared, sell them postcards for a quarter, three of them for a dollar. You'd laugh about it later, down the road. How he took you for a quarter But he left you with a smile Now the goat man preached the gospel But he changed a couple of words He was the cussingest preacher Anybody'd ever heard But if you needed preaching Come Sunday, four o'clock well, The gold man gave a sermon Whether anybody was there or not Now the things most people slay for The gold man, he rejected It was for the good of others All that money he collected Cause he did not have much use for it Himself, he used to say He walked a hundred thousand miles Giving all of it away North he'd go in springtime And south when it got cold The good man kept walking Until he was 85 years old All through the Carolinas Virginia and D.C. Georgia and Alabama And all across Tennessee Bushy beard with bit 
piece of food stuck to it And if you had some fat to chew He'd sit with you and chew it You did not bathe in all those years And you wouldn't just not notice You might even catch a whiff of it Looking at some old goat man photos A favorite goat His name was Old Bill For 30 years They walked together Up and down the hills Old Bill got to stop pulling He earned his right to ride His last days in the wagon While the goat man walked beside I've got too crowded and the cars all got too fast and the goat man parked his wagon and he put his goats to pasture and there was somewhere down near Macon in a nursing home that he found himself a sweetheart they say he might have worn cologne Thanks, everybody. I've enjoyed it. <laughs>